Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. Today, we're back with another how-to on how to check your Honda manual transmissions, main shaft thrust clearance. Now this how-to is created for individuals who already have a general understanding of Honda manual transmissions and the components that go inside of them. And because of that, we won't really be breaking down all the different components inside the transmission. This is more for the mechanically inclined individuals who are comfortable with removing a transmission from a car, disassembling it, inspecting, replacing parts, and reassembling the transmission. So if you're watching this, then logic tells me that A, either you are doing your due diligence and researching everything you need to know before taking apart your transmission, or B, you've already cracked open your transmission, replaced whatever you needed to replace, and you found out now that you need to check this clearance. Or you're not any of those individuals, and you're just someone who wants to see how this process is done, and you want to support me by giving me some views, so I thank you for that. But if you find out that you aren't one of those individuals, but you still have your own car, you still have your own project, and you still need transmission work, but you aren't really comfortable with taking transmissions and engines, things like that apart, or getting too in-depth with these things because you just feel like you're kind of in over your head, strongly urge you guys to look up your local performance import shops that do transmission rebuilds, support them, leave these things to the professionals if you aren't comfortable with doing it yourself. There's some pretty well-known shops out there in the Honda community, you've got Ghostworks in California. James out there has done work for Spoon Sports and several podium finishing or race cars. And you also have shops like Gear Driven down in Florida. There's several options that you guys have if this is something that you don't want to do yourself. Now you might be asking, when would I need to do this? Why would I need to do this? And is it really that important? So anytime you change out the trans housing, the clutch housing, the main shaft itself, main shaft bearings, synchro hubs or distance collars if you have them, especially if you're doing a K-series, that is when you're going to need to at least check the main shaft thrust clearance to make sure that it's within spec. And the spec that you want is going to be four thousandths of an inch to seven thousandths of an inch. If you're in between those numbers, you're A-OK. -okay. It's important to check the thrust clearance because an incorrect thrust is going to create an axial misalignment in your gears, which subsequently is going to shift load distributions between a gear pair because now the contact patch has changed. It's going to induce abnormal stress on the gear teeth and can even increase gear noise. And at the end of the day, ultimately, it's going to decrease the life of your gears. When it comes to the tools you need to perform this check, it's actually quite minimal. For this, you'll just need a few wrenches. It depends on what your transmission is. This is a TSX transmission, so I got the magnesium case left-hand threaded bolts on the housings. I'm only gonna need a 12, 14, and a 17. You're gonna need a soft plastic hammer or a dead blow, just as long as it's not steel or iron, you're okay. And then you're going to need the specialty item. This is a main shaft holder tool. This is the main piece that grips around the main shaft. And then the steel and aluminum plates are also part of the kit. I'll show you guys exactly how to use that. You'll also need a dial indicator as well. I've got one with a magnetic base. You can get one with the vice grip as well. It's really up to you. When it comes to the parts that you need to perform this check, you'll need the clutch housing, you'll need the transmission housing, and then you'll need the main shaft itself. It's also very important to note that you'll need the input shaft bearing in place. For the main shaft, you'll need both of the washers, the flat washer and the conical washer. And in the trans housing, you have to make sure that the oil plate and the shim is already installed. It should already be installed. There should be one in there. As long as you check and it's there, you should be good to go. So we're gonna start by placing the conical washer on the input shaft bearing. You want the conical washer opening up outward. So if you looked at my fingers as a side cutaway of the conical washer, you want it to be opening upwards like that, not opening downwards like this. Secondly, place your flat washer on top of that, and then we'll place the main shaft right into the clutch housing. Once you have the main shaft in the clutch housing, we're going to mate the trans and the clutch housing together. You will not be using any sealant or Honda bond yet on the surfaces because we're still gonna be taking this apart. But you can snug up about every other bolt between the two housings and you just gotta make sure that the two housings close properly. Now that you got both the case halves bolted together snugly, this is where we're gonna take the soft hammer and we're just gonna tap on the input shaft to make sure that it's seated all the way down inside the trans. And now with our main shaft holder toolkit, we've got this big aluminum block. We're gonna place this right on these two structural ribs here. 
just like that. And it's gonna provide a base for us to push up against. Now the main shaft holder tool is two pieces. It's got two countersunk bolts in here. We're gonna slip this right over the main shaft onto the splines here. And then we're going to tighten these two Allen bolts here and it's going to grip the main shaft. And it's gonna look just like this. Now with the kit, there should also be a larger bolt that goes right through the holder here. And you're gonna thread this down. And what we're doing here is we're gonna use this aluminum block as leverage. Since this block has a hold of the main shaft, as we thread this bolt through the holder, it's going to eventually touch the aluminum block. And then as we continue to thread this bolt through the main shaft holder, it's gonna push up on the aluminum block. And when that happens, it's going to slowly pull the main shaft outwards. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our dial indicator right at the end here, and that's gonna tell us how much the main shaft has pulled up. Now also in the kit, there is a zinc plated steel plate here. It's got two large slots in it. This basically just provides a platform if you have a magnetic dial indicator base. So you can use this, grab a bolt, something that works with anything on your transmission here. I'll just take a bolt, put it right through here. We'll thread it down and this will provide a steel base for the magnetic holder of your dial indicator. Once you have that base installed, grab your dial indicator we're going to set it right on here we're going to turn the base on so it grips just like that and then we're going to adjust your dial indicator so that it is parallel to the main shaft to get the most accurate reading you're just going to touch it to the main shaft again make sure it's parallel to the main shaft that's going to be really important for an accurate measurement so once you have everything installed properly this is what it should look like you should have the large aluminum block on the structural ribbing as a base. You should have your main shaft holder tightened around the main shaft, the bolt going through the main holder and just resting on the aluminum plate below. You should have your steel base bolted onto the clutch housing in whatever fashion that you want. It could be anywhere depending on what bolts you have, or what orientation you wanna do. You should have your dial indicator installed as well. And it should be parallel to the main shaft for the most accurate measurement. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we've got the gauge showing it is zeroed out, it's pointed at zero. And as we turn this bolt, it's going to pull the main shaft out. And that distance is going to be our thrust clearance. Each increment on this gauge is one thousandths of an inch. Again, our spec is four thousandths to seven thousandths. So we're hoping to be somewhere in between those numbers. So as we turn, you should start to see the needle move. And you're going to turn until the needle stops moving and then at the point at which it stops moving, you don't want to go any more than 60 degrees or else you could damage either the tool or even worse, the transmission itself. So we'll keep turning. It's still moving. Looks like it stopped there. Pretty close to stopping. And right about there is where it's going to stop. So as you can see, we've got a reading of six thousandths of an inch. We are at six right there. So that is actually within spec because again, our spec is four thousandths to seven thousandths. So for this transmission and its main shaft thrust clearance, we are A-OK. -okay. Now, if you measure your thrust clearance and you find that you're outside of the four thousandths to seven thousandths limit, what do you do now? Well, you're gonna take both the housings apart again. You're gonna pull the main shaft out. You're gonna grab some snap ring pliers and you're gonna pull out the existing shim that's in there. You're gonna measure the thickness of that shim with a micrometer. And depending on how much more or less clearance you need, you're gonna do a little bit of that math. Let's say, for example, if you're outside of that seven thousandths limit, let's just say you're at ten thousandths and you want it to be at least five thousandths, which is right in between that four to seven thousandths range, right? So that's a difference of five thousandths of an inch. So you're going to add that five thousandths measurements to the thickness of the existing shim, and that's going to be the thickness of the new shim that you're going to want to get. If you go onto any Honda parts website, they should be able to supply you with the list of all the different sizes that they sell. D series and B series guys, beware. A lot of this stuff is discontinued now. So K series guys, you guys should be okay. But B series guys, it's going to be very, very difficult to source these shims. Just a closer look with the setup, the bolt is still pressing down into the aluminum plate. The main shaft is still pulled up. It still shows six thousandths of an inch there. Now we can be sure that when we get this transmission back together, axial alignment of the gears from the main shaft to the counter shaft 
are gonna be perfect. Well, I hope you guys learned a little something today on checking your main shaft thrust clearance on your Honda transmissions. I don't know if you guys noticed, but yes, that is my logo on the main shaft holder. It is the BVS brand. I did create this main shaft thrust clearance tool. It's one of the first of, I hope, many different types of Honda specific tools to come in the future. I did make a small limited run of these main shaft holder tools. I think I've got maybe just nine more sets in stock. So if you would like one, go ahead and DM me on Instagram, bv.speed, and let me know that you're interested in buying one. I'm looking at maybe selling these at around 120, 130 bucks, most likely $130 ship, which if you look at the market for these tools is pretty affordable compared Compared to everything else. I guess that's the big takeaway from this is that I wanted to be able to create Honda specific tools that are affordable. It is made out of 6061 aluminum. This kit doesn't include the dial indicator itself. You can get this from Amazon. I got this one specifically from Amazon as well. Again, if this is something you're uncomfortable doing, you don't want to go diving deep into a transmission rebuild, doing all these clearance checks or anything like that, go ahead and support your local transmission shops. There are plenty of them out there that will do this for you and make sure that you don't have to deal with these headaches because these guys do them every single day and that pretty much does it for this video so if you guys liked it go ahead and give it a thumbs up i would really appreciate it if you guys shared the video it's one of the metrics that really helps to grow the channel if you guys have any questions or comments on this process or anything at all in general go ahead and put it in the comments section down below and i'll do my best to answer them and if you guys want to stay up to date with my build and my progress as a driver go ahead and subscribe to the channel but until the next video stay safe stay smooth and i'll see you guys in the next video